you people? What? Hey guys. Say hello to the quitter. Oh. How yeah, are you going to come at me bad. like that? How are you going to come at me like that? I'm sorry, I meant RIPB. That's right, right, exactly. And I'm fine and I'm healthy. And I'm not uh, retiring. Okay. Are you guys ready? Yeah. We, we know why we're here. Yeah. We're here to rock your face off. Yeah. Not us so much as our guests, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Rock and Roll Hall of Famers, yeah. Green Day! There's three chairs. Okay. Ooh, bouncy. Does that ever get old, that kind of uh, applause when you walk out? You're like, eh. I'm like, I'm not at home, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a bunch of Green Day fans here, and we have Green Day here. This seems like a good opportunity. Best case scenario. Best case scenario, kind of catch up with the guys. Now, it hasn't been so long since we saw you. You came in when we world premiered the new single about six weeks ago or so. How have you been since then? Every day, really, please. Really good? Day. Every day has been good. It gets better than the last. Um, no, things are going great. We, now, we announced our tour. <laughs> we, uh, we put another, another song out called Fire Ready Aim. And... Yes. Uh, and uh, that's, it's going good, it's going good. Seems like every year is becoming like an anniversary now. It's like, next year will be like the Insomniac anniversary. So it's like, it's, well. Next year, by the way, next year. Oh. No, it's just, it just means uh, we're time past. Every, and we're all gonna die soon. Yeah. I mean, that's what it sounds like. That's, that's not the direction I was hoping to go with. Um, by the way, let, let me just say this as we, as we talk about breakfast with the Green Day. You know, Kevin and I have been doing the show for 30 years, as many of you know. And these guys have been together longer than we've been doing the show. I mean, there aren't a lot of bands. That's right. There, there, are, a few, there are a few that we run into who, who, uh, who can say that, but this is the, you are the only band that we have ever done three breakfasts with. We, we had you guys when Warning came out in 2000. We did a breakfast with at Capitol Records. You guys remember that? Yep. Yep. One of the most historic uh, music buildings in, in the world. With no closets. With no closets, I heard. <laughs> That's true. That's how they built it. Forgot that, yeah. And then in 2009, we had you at the K-Rock HD Radio Sound Space. I think that was for 21st Breakdown. We did it. So about every 10 years or so, we do this. Here we are in 2019 doing breakfast again. Yeah! Sadly, there will be no fourth. Oh. 2029? Why is everyone looking at me? No, we'll, we'll all be dead by then. Just so you know. Oh, why is it my fault? We've been around a long time. That's what we're saying. Well, I hope you had the time of your life. <laughs> that's, that's so dumb. So that dumb. Just dumb as shit. That just happened. <laughs> that's a cheap joke, am I right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. But if anyone can make it, Billy Joe can make it. I think we'll allow it. Got a lot. Got a lot of mileage out of that one. Well, let's. It's uh, a long road to the bottom, but I got a lot of miles on me. <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, catch people up who maybe uh, hearing this interview today maybe haven't been keeping track of uh, of the new record coming out in February and all some of the stuff we talked about when we last saw you in September. Uh, you've been gone for a minute. You've been working very very hard on this record. In fact, if I, if I recall, you told us that you recorded way more songs that ended up on this album. Uh, how come? Why, uh, why? You told us it was 26 minutes long, this new album, which is unusual. Um, well, we're, I think we're just trying to do different things, and uh, time is one of them. Okay. So, <laughs> so, did you, uh, did but you the set songs up? are like very, uh, a lot of high energy and a lot of like, they're, the songs are like two, like two minute just punches in the face. So, and uh, Was that your goal was to make? Shorter songs? No. It's odd that they all no, turned out that way. It was, um, I think the demos were just shorter, and we're like, should we add anything? And no. It's that good. level yeah. of commitment. Yeah. 
that yeah. we've come to appreciate. Yeah, and it, yeah. We just uh, did a couple lines of tempo, and it's all good. <laughs> Mike, it looks like you want to add something to that about these songs. I just think when the songs are right, you know it. You know, you look at them and you go, "Yeah, we're not gonna mess with this anymore. This is perfect." So, and that's how we felt. We've never said that. No. So, <laughs> but I mean, but you're also a band who, at one point, you know, the Uno Dos Tres year. I mean, you had so many songs and you couldn't wait to put them all out. You know, dozens and dozens of songs. And now we, you're going the other way, the reductive way. Well, we do have. I mean, we have a lot of songs left over. For um, and the great thing is, like, we'll be able to just keep putting out music and, yeah. like, um. I don't know, and I, I like sort of the, the like nowadays. It's it seems like you can be more rapid fire and and putting out stuff anytime you feel like it, and it's like so you never know. We might be SoundCloud rappers. We'll, we'll see what happens. I want to see some face tattoos night. on you the next time I see you. I yes. would like to hear some rap. Yeah. Okay. Good. I gotta like have like purple and pink dreadlocks the next time you see me. Um. You also told us that um, that the album, like the all of you, unicorn on my face. Yeah. That'd be a good look. Seriously, just think about that. I know a guy. You also told us that this album, I guess this is true for all Green Day records, is kind of a reflection of the world around us and everything too. We live in perilous times right now. You went out of your way to say that you didn't want to mention any particular orange person by name, but how? But how has the America 2019 kind of uh, how is that reflected in this this new music? Talking about the Cheetos guy? That's right. <laughs> yes, I think. That's, that's the guy. Ch Chester Cheetos. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't say father of all motherfuckers and not think of the president of the United States. <laughs> um, well, and, but, I, 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 but it's also important to make sure that we're doing things that come from the heart because there's a lot less heart going on in the world right now. So, um, yeah, yeah. I wasn't, it wasn't, yeah, I, I ran out of words. <laughs> so. I mean, you make a good point, though. There, it does feel like things are so abrasive right now. You know what I mean? And, and hopeless for a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, I think of, like, social media uh, in particular because it's, like, with, with Twitter and Facebook and, and uh, like, a lot of people put their, unless you're, like, a real sort of activist doing things, all, like, putting things up all the time, like Sean King or something like that, it's like there's also, but it's like when people spout out like what they're thinking about and without thinking about it, and it's just you get back and forth this sort of freakish, like seventh level of hell of people rubbing all over their bodies, all on like comment sections. <laughs> and it's like, it looks, it's like, I think of it as like, it's like a bathroom stall when you walk in and it's like, for a good time, you know dial this you know it's like glory hole and all that and it's like that's what the equivalent of like what twitter is to me and it's usually written while someone's taking a okay so that's what i think of it's good visual yes that's well that's the internet <laughs> and you want you want to make sure you're on the right side of the glory hole <laughs> should have called your your next album could be glory hole right yeah no. Father, father of all glory holes. Good morning, Los Angeles! <laughs> <laughs> Who had the phrase glory hole in the Green Day bingo card today that that would be said? <laughs> oh, you did. Congratulations. Yeah. You're a winner. You're a winner. Hey, um, the band is uh, here, obviously, for uh, breakfast with uh, Green Day here on the Kevin Bead Show on the World Famous Carrot. Kevin Bead's last breakfast, we're calling it. Say hello again, audience, for folks just tuning in. <laughs> obviously, you get um, a new card. You get a new card. Obviously, uh, live music happening on this stage in minutes. Um, let's go out to the audience. We promised we'd include some questions. Where is my good friend, Allie McKay? Allie, are you over here? Hi. Say hi to Allie, everybody. Hi. Stand up. Hi. Yeah, we need you to stand up, Allie. I'm standing. Oh, you oh, are sorry. standing. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, see, right. I see what you're doing. Sorry. How, I'm sure. How are, uh, how are yeah. things out there in audience land? Things are good. I have three people here that are going to ask questions. Do all you right. want to just ask all three now? As or maybe they'll answer, I mean, in between. Yeah. Okay. Let's do one question and then maybe an answer. Okay, that sounds like a great idea. This is going well. Richard, what is your question for the guys of Green Day? Uh, yeah, uh, my question is if you have any advice for uh, upcoming bands, particularly in punk rock. Things have changed a tremendous amount since you started. There's nothing up and coming about playing punk rock, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> 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 it's going, it's like... <laughs> what? Wow. We didn't do this for you. 
Um, do I have any? Um, I don't know. Is it harder? Ford Econo is- line is a good van. Guy line, okay. Yeah. Play anywhere and everywhere. I mean, but mostly I'm, everywhere. I'm in a punk rock band. I was going to say the same thing you did, Mike. Play. That's the advice, right? Is just play. The more you play, the better you get. The, the more you work it, the more people you get in front of, right? The more, the more stories you have. That's yeah, all. right. Good, that's what life's about, right? Good stories. Yeah. Yeah. And also, isn't this, I mean, in, in some ways, isn't it kind of the best time to be any kind of a musician because it's so DIY? Because you have the tools you need to get your music out there. Look at how many people have come along in recent years, your Lords and your Billie Eilishes and people like that who have just kind of created something in their home, put it on the internet, the next thing you know, people love them because they're, they have authentic messages and they, they have a way to distribute it now that you didn't have when you were their age. Well, I, a, lot, a lot of people have a lot of time in their hands when they're in their bedroom alone. So it's like a lot of... It's not the only thing they have in their hands. It's, it's, <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, people just making like DIY music on their computers. And like back when we first started, we didn't have like... We didn't even have a four track. We had... I remember the first time uh, ever making a demo. We, I, Me and Mike, we... We recorded it, the guitars and the drums, without singing, and then we put that into a boombox, and we sang, and then we turned up the boombox, and then we sang into the other tape recorder. So it was like, and it came out good. It was good. <laughs> I was not like, expecting that ending. No, but it was like we were just trying to figure out any means possible to kind of, so it's like, yeah, I mean. You got now Is it in some ways more difficult for bands now because there's a million different routes that you can take to getting noticed? Well, bands got to learn how to play live. I mean, if you can't, if you suck live, then you just then suck. You just <laughs> then you can't, and you're Funky. not you're not gonna get paid. <laughs> Speaking of playing live, you guys are gonna do Dodger Stadium next year. Yeah. I assume most of you have tickets. Um, how do you prepare for that? Any differently than you do for a room this size, or do you think Lots do you scale splats. it up? <laughs> What's the do you what do you, scale you it up? Prepare? Do you try to figure out a way to fill, no, not reach those people in the back? You're never ready. You just you know get up there and make a freaking mess, you know, and and then uh, you find yourself after a few minutes into it. Chewing look, tobacco. We same question. But we look at you guys and we go, well, they have it figured out. No? I would assume so. <laughs> I, no, am uh, I alone here? I'm a, like- no, we, um, yeah, it's a lot of work. You, we sit around and we play. We'll bring up, like, different songs. And, you know, writing a set list is, uh, it's a lot. It's like coming up in, with an album sequence. And, uh, um, but, you know, I think what we do is we end up playing it and rehearsing together or band practice or whatever. And then, like, we'll play a couple songs, and then we'll stop and go, oh, this feels good next. You know, we'll play, you know, really? A baby does not like that. Yeah. <laughs> our, our, we were very, very liberal young. with our uh, 18 and over policy here. I, <laughs> I feel like someone should have been checking ID. <laughs> wow. Um, Guns N' Roses has been on the road for a long time now, the reunion a couple of years, and they, uh, from time to time, like a couple of nights ago, they pulled out a song that they had not played in 26 years together. You guys have so much catalog that you probably have kind of left behind. Do you ever revisit any of those songs or think, oh, man, that would sound fun now? Well, there's also, there's also n- new songs. There's also new songs, true. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, there's both. <laughs> what, what, um, yeah, we do that sometimes. We'll play like uh, something like Paper Lanterns or, uh, um, uh, but we also like to do like we did a thing where we did a um, a, 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 a online benefit thing. That's so rad. All right, seriously. Uh, and we were uh, we just we were like let's just play old stuff. Let's just do that. So um, yeah, we pull stuff out. Yeah. Um, before we get back out to the audience here with Breakfast with Green Day on the World Famous Carrick, let me ask each of you, what's the best Green Day song? What is the oh! best Green Day song? All right, how about we have them shout out what their favorite song is after one, two. That's it. There it is. Oh, I think we can all agree on what they said. How about you guys? You have to have something that you're proudest of or think holds up best or has the, be- the most uh, poignancy for you. 
Yeah, but we haven't released it or told anybody what it's yeah. called yet. Ah. Oh, no. Oh, nice try. <laughs> <laughs> The ones we're most excited about right now, uh, I know everybody says it, but they literally are on Father of All Motherfuckers. Really? Yeah. Like, those I are mean, their favorite songs you've ever done? I mean, a favorite ever? I don't know. Which one's my favorite kid? I have a favorite. <laughs> I just won't tell them. Sure. All right. <laughs> How about you, Billy Joe? You have a favorite? Jesus of Suburbia. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> that is your Bohemian Rhapsody, man. Yeah. Oh, you know? thanks, man. I mean, it really is. Yeah. It's amazing. Thanks. I was, um, I was flying out here for... Uh, hey, we're talking up here. Hey. Hey. We're talking. I was flying out here, and I was uh, sitting next to a woman yeah. who was... Uh, <laughs> sitting next to a woman on the plane, and, you know, she was checking me out like ladies do, and, you know, was asking a lot of questions. You know, she was, she was thinking about it, and... Um, so we get to talking, and she, I'm like, oh, yeah, I got this job on the radio. Oh, what are you doing? Well, I'm going to see Green Day. Oh, Green Day. And she said she was 14 years old. You were the first show she ever saw in Columbus, Ohio. And she said, A, she bought the tickets before Dookie came out, so she couldn't believe she was seeing the biggest band in the world at that time, it seemed like, to her in such a small venue. And B, it's one of the seminal moments of her growing up in her whole life. I mean, there's something about being that age and seeing your favorite rock band in a club. You know what I mean? Did you score with her? I did not work out. (laughs) But I mean, just to see her eyes light up, remembering something from 26 years ago, her seeing you guys and how important it was to her, I thought, man, that's the power of rock and roll, first of all. And you've had that impact with so many people, including many people in this audience as well. Um, Do you have a show like that in your own mind? That was the one where you went, you just walked out of there feeling like you were on fire. Like, I can't believe I just saw that and I'm so happy and I'm so lucky from back in your day. I think that I've had like three different experiences with that. I'd say one was Van Halen. Another was um, Operation Ivy. And the other is The Replacements. So I think those three were kind of, uh, yeah, that, that was really, really big for me. How about you, Trey? Um, that Op Ivy show, that was probably, and The Lookout also played that night. Just a, a night you'll never forget. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, Beyonce, I assume? Uh, probably. It's probably that, uh, that first time you get pushed into a pit. Yeah. That, would be, <laughs> that would be a Christ on Parade did, show. Did you see Adamant? Did I? I did. Yeah. But I saw him recently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I still get teared up about it. Yeah. Uh, you reposted a video of Shakira singing one of your songs. Yeah. On Instagram, which I thought was awesome. Do, you, do a lot of bands cover you and do you bind it? And do some of them destroy your music? Are they bad? You know? Um, yeah, they definitely destroy it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's fun. I, 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 when people cover your songs, it's, uh, it's, it's great. Yeah. Um, Weird Al doing Canadian Idiot. Yeah, like five seconds of summer. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Weird Al has to be. <laughs> That's a given. Come on. <laughs> has to be the greatest compliment, though, when Weird Al does one of your songs, right? I, I would imagine. I was kind of bummed it wasn't about food. Yeah, but I got you. But I like, yeah, Canadian idiot. I got you. It's although they're they're doing pretty good up there in Canada these days. I gotta tell you, Bean thinks that Weird Al is the greatest human that ever lived. Uh, Doesn't yes. think, knows. Okay, for real. Let's go back to Allie out of the audience here in the crowd. Breakfast with uh, Green Day on the world famous Garrick. Hey, Allie. Hey, I've got Thanks. Angel here for you, and she has a question. Hi, guys. First of all, I'm not worthy. Um, thank you for always being the megaphone for us rowdy voices demanding to be heard. Thank you so much. And uh, my question would be, I have a 13-year-old daughter who's really starting to embrace a punk rock mentality, and I couldn't be more proud. So what is your advice as punk rock dads um, raising future punk rock-minded adults? That is deep, you guys. Take a minute. Every single person just went, oh, I don't know. <laughs> Let me think about that. What, what the future Just of- give them freedom to be themselves uh, support them 100% um, and to remember you are their parent and they're gonna think you're kind of a dork it, so don't dig what they dig too much or they'll hate it just wait till they start stealing your t-shirts uh, already happened already happened do all of your kids like you they lo- I hope they love me I'm just asking <laughs> you mean as people like or it. as a band no, I'm saying as a band. Oh, did it sound like people? Yeah, no, that's no. what it sounded like. As a band. 
Um, yeah, I think, um, you know, it's great. My, my, both of my sons play music. One's in a, a really, really good bands, too. I, I'm not just saying that. They're fantastic. You're just saying that. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> One's in a band called Ultra Q, and the other is in a band called Swimmers. And they're, they're great, and they're very genuine. They really have the same passion and uh, drive to want to, they love music. You know, and they That's do awesome. it for the right reasons. So it's uh, it's great. That so. must make you so happy. Yeah, it's to see great. them appreciate music the way you do. It is. It's kind of like um, it's sort of sort of turned into like a a bunch. It's like a rehearsal space in my my house now. With like three different bands and stuff. Turn like it that. down. Yeah. <laughs> Dad's trying to sleep. I'm yeah. watching the Mass Singer. Yeah. <laughs> the Mass Singer. <laughs> do you guys remember the first show you ever played? Ever played? Yes. Like when like, I've had different experiences with that. Um, do you remember the first show you I mean, ever it was played? A, I mean, as a person. Yeah. As no, a I mean band. as a band. As a uh, band. Yeah, Davis, and then. Yeah. Well, Rod's Hickory Pit. Yeah. Oh, Rod's Hickory Pit. Yeah. Rod's Hickory Pit. Yeah, my mom worked in a twenty-four hour diner called Rod's Hickory Pit, and it had it was in Vallejo, California, and there was um. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then there was a, a little there was like a bar and then there was sort of this little uh, room where they had activities and stuff like that and so she um, bingo she like asked if we could play there and so yeah they served hot dogs and we played and my friends showed up and that was our first gig how was, your, how was the barbecue so, good like, what's that was the barbecue good at the Hickory yeah, oh, yeah. oh yeah good yeah. ribs remember anywhere and everywhere <laughs> yeah did um did your mom's friends like it? Yeah. That she worked with. I don't know about her friends, <laughs> but like um, I assume you were loud. Yeah, I, I, my family is really kind of very musical, um, so everybody yeah everybody seemed to appreciate it. We played La Bamba. Did you? Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mike sang it. You don't want. Do you remember playing that. Acoustic Christmas and throwing the Christmas trees into the pit? Yep. That was awesome. You know what was not awesome though is <laughs> I I threw a beer bottle. Through. Remember, they had the there was like a, a a wall with like a window, and it was David Bowie's band that was behind there. Yeah. So yeah, right. It was uh, so. Well, no one got hurt, but it was. Uh, I as was far like, as you know. like when I think about it now, I'm like, ooh, God, I'm so glad. Got lucky on that one. I did. Yeah. Our uh, remaining moments on stage here with Green Day. They'll be back to performing live here in a minute on the Kevin Amin Show on K-Rock. Um, you know, we haven't uh, mentioned, I know it's uh, old news for everybody in, in front of us here, but for folks listening on the radio, tickets are on sale now for the Dodger Stadium show in July. This is you and Weezer and Fall Out Boy and Interrupters yeah. going to be an amazing show. I, you talk about getting your money's worth for that, by the way. And you put it on sale so early, and tickets are going so fast. It's going to be sold out before New Year's the way it's going. You know? Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. Is there a second and third Dodger Stadium show oh, plan? jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying in case it's needed. Sure. <laughs> sure. Why not? Why not? Pe Peco Park. <laughs> Let's take uh, one more question from the audience, shall we? Uh, okay. Allie? Uh, thanks, Bean. We're going to need I'm you to stand up. Oh, you're, sta oh, you're standing already. Okay, good. God. What? <laughs> I mean. By the way, your eyelashes look amazing, Thank Allie. you for noticing. You're re really yeah, good. thank okay. you. Well, who do you got? Oh, I hate you. This is Dom, and he has a question. Dom with a Green Day old school t-shirt. Yeah. Yes. Uh, first off, Bean, you will be missed. Thank you for Thank you, right. sir. No, no, time, no time for that. Uh, Green Day, you guys are everything. Thank you. And, and as someone with uh, not an is ounce this your of... replacement, by the way? <laughs> he sounds like he's gunning for it, man. <laughs> I'm trying, guys. Keep sucking ass. Uh, as, Kevin uh, and Dom show. <laughs> I like it. Okay, go ahead. Uh, as someone with not an ounce of musical talent in my body, I'm always fascinated by the songwriting process, so I would just like to know yours. You come up with lyrics. How do you get together and put the music down, the riffs, harmonize, etc.? cetera? Um, usually, like, I think of melodies in my head and, get, like, and kind of mess around with guitar stuff, and then um, I'll kind of do like a, a quick demo. And then I'll send it to Mike and Trey, and then we will discuss it, and then we get together and we play it, and uh, that's about it. It's not that exciting. You make? <laughs> Have you ever? Well, I think now it's like we, you know, we are kind of like we know 
each other so well that we're able to, uh, it's they're, like they're, the process moves quicker for us, it seems like now, than it, like in the, in the past, it's like when you're, you know, that's it's one of the exciting things about when you're a young band is trying to discover what all, all your, the members are, what kind of sound you're gonna come up with. So it's like finding your chemistry or something, so. Did you ever have a, a riff or something that you just loved that they both went, eh, I'm not feeling it. I think I feel like that every song I, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm sure, but I mean, anything that was, that everything always gets used for us for something. So it's, uh, there's stuff that we, that we'll go, I'll, you know, we'll come up with and I'll go, uh, maybe not this record, but like the next record or, or and we've done, I mean, like it's not like time of your life. We, that was written back like during the Dookie days and then, um, it didn't come out until two records later. So. Uh, but yeah, how many songs would you say you have baked right now total oh, that shit. we haven't heard? Oh my God, not that many. Yeah, not, not, it's not like a Machiavellian catalog, but right? It's, it's, <laughs> You're not too far. Easily a baker's dozen. <laughs> okay, you want to talk about baked. A baker's dozen? So we got a plane crash this worth. <laughs> what? I'm just. I'm, you know, I'm just saying, there'll be something to put out. Hate to see you go, man. <laughs> it's short time bead. I'm, I'm burning the place down on the way out. Um, anything we forgot? I don't think so. The anything album we forgot in February? The tour uh, happening everywhere? You guys are going to Spain this weekend? Woo! See, doing your thing? God, it's just great to have you back, man. Yeah. Thanks, back. and good luck in your future endeavors. Thank you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. Good luck in your future endeavors. You. How about that? Thanks. Can we hear it for Green Day? <laughs> the nicest. <laughs>